the man of the moment, Ambassador Francis Kirini Mudaura, former colleagues, former cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, friends of Ambassador Mudaura, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Let me first of all make some uh, declaration that uh, unlike most of you, I invited myself for this forum. <laughs> we were planning uh, our work schedule for the week, and today we had a very important activity in uh, Transoia County. And my principal secretary, Amos Gavesha, told me we have to come early. And uh, I asked him why. He told me because he is attending Ambassador Francis Mugaura's book launch. <laughs> and I told him, go and tell Ambassador Mugaura. We'll come early, you'll make it, you'll go for the book launch, and Apele Asipele, I'll be there. <laughs> and it's because um, the man whose book we are launching today is truly, truly a great man. And personally, I draw a lot of inspiration from the story of his life, and especially now that I serve in government. And I wonder, I have been in government for only one year. How do you serve in government for 15 years? <laughs> and you know, being in public service mostly, is mostly a thankless job. I think the ministers who have uh, been served before who are here will tell you, you need a reason. Every morning that you wake up, you need a reason for waking up, for going to work, for doing something. You, you need a reason. If you think that that reason is being praised, being loved, then you will not even go to work. You need a higher calling, and for me, I'm intrigued by the many years that Ambassador Mugaura has been in public service. For those who served with me before, around government, not necessarily in government, I am an avowed Kibakaist, and I don't hide that. When I was in Ilios, uh doing economics, Remember in the year 1988, when Kibaka was demoted to Minister for Health from, David, from Vice President, our class of economics, we all cried tears, read by our teacher, Mrs. Mugo. And so uh, in the year 2002, uh, when I was writing the campaign team for, for Mwai Kibaki, later in the 2005, when Honorable uh, Kaito Burundi was leading us in the banana campaign, promising to shape the whole country. Uh, and Ambassador Mudaura was working generally around us, we were very young people, encouraging us. But I would later meet Ambassador Mudaura in person when I came back, that time I was abroad, and I came back to the country in 2007, specifically when I resigned my job abroad to come and work for my Kibaki for his re-election. So I came and typical of me, the Kajituma, and I said I am going to ensure that Kibaki gets votes in Rift Valley. It was so difficult and unimaginable. Then one man who was working with me, a gentleman from um, Nakuru, his father was an MP, he told me you have to meet some people. You cannot have this zeal of believing Kibaki can get votes from Rift Valley. You must be crazy, but before I conclude you are crazy, let me take you to some men. Uh, they are not women. Uh, they have to listen to you. So this gentleman, who was Mark Mizaka's son called Paul, took me to one Peter Munk in his office on Mulanga Road. I found other people, most of them were here, and they listened to me and I told them something is going wrong. 
and, and I, I have done my analysis. If you don't do something, Kibaki will not be elected. He was so shocked that I took them through some figures, many things, and what was going wrong in the Kibaki election campaign. They told me, you know, we have to go and see someone, and he has to listen to you. So I was casually dressed, I was not officially dressed, so I said, can we do that tomorrow? So that at least I am dressed decently. And Monga will not hear uh, any of that. He insisted that you have to go and meet Ambassador Mugaura in Harambe House. I told him, look at how I'm dressed. How can I meet the head of public service when I'm dressed like this? So Monga said, the only thing that you need is a jacket. So I'll give you mine. <laughs> so give, give me a coat. You know, I am quite tall, he's shorter than me, so it was hanging somewhere. <laughs> and uh, we went to Ambassador Mugaura, he listened to me. He had this tendency of this big book we used to call Jota. So every, every time we went to Ambassador Mugaura, he wrote everything. Something that I picked from him until today you come to my office. Whether I am writing sensible things or not, I always try to write something. Because I learned that from Ambassador Mugaura. And he agreed with us. And he went for us and we went to see Timaki, we went there. We changed the course of the campaign. And you know, the rest of what happened, as you can see, is history. The only problem is that when we came to the lift on the second floor of Harambe House, and I was so happy because Mugaura has agreed to my ideas. In the first sentence from Mr. Munga, I thought it would be congratulations. Then, uh, but he told me, Nikikuyu, to get your clinic out of there. Anyhow, as you know what happened after uh, 2007, a very difficult time. And uh, remember when you we were telling the votes uh, for Kibaki at KICC and uh, uh, JB Wanjui. Uh, consulted uh, Mugaura and said, the way it is going at KICC is not good. So there was a, a gentleman called Mujamat who was supposed to be the chief agent. And JB Wanjui consulted Mugaura and he said, we have to remove that gentleman, Ukosi Okuzuri, up on the We have to take a hold here. And so Mugaura and uh, JB uh, insisted that I, I, I replace Mejamatu as a chief agent for Kibaki at KICC, where I stayed for four days without sleeping uh, until we had to tell the vote. I actually left KICC on the 30th of December 2007 when the KICC was cleared by GSU and everybody was asked to get into vehicles we didn't know where we were going. And uh, somebody put me into the boat of a Prado belonging to Olago Mother Karua. And I found myself at the swearing in uh, of the back of the <laughs> <laughs> at State House. Um, I, I will leave the rest to, to my memoirs in the future. This is not my memoir. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is uh, Mudaola's memoirs, so I will uh, redact that. Um, the reason I, I actually decided to invite myself, other than being inspired by Ambassador Mugaura, is uh, six years ago, or seven years ago, we are about, I was in this same room when Ambassador Mugaura was launching his foundation. And I remember, it is at that point when I think he was challenged by some people to ensure that he writes his book. So this journey started right here where we are. And I was right there, so there's no way I could miss that. But I will just mention three things. I don't want to tire you with many stories. One is on the contribution of Ambassador Mugaura to public service. That today, uh, speaking as a minister for public service, I, I feel very honored to just be associated in any way with the foundation that uh, Ambassador Mudaura left. I have got two of my predecessors here, Professor Kobia and Cecil Kariuki, who passed through that one. I think we are privileged people. 
after the recent reshuffle, and I was moved to this ministry. And I uh, moved to Harambe House. It was difficult not to feel the aura of Mudaura and his contribution to public service as we know it. But more than that is that the 10 years of Kibaki's uh, administration could not have been without Ambassador Mudaura. We all know that Kibaki's tenure is synonymous with the tenure of Ambassador Mudaura. But let me just mention, even before he became the head of public service, that recently, as a minister for trade, I can attest that uh, we have now the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, and we have ratified it. Almost 50 countries have ratified it. This uh, agreement is a pale shadow compared to the strength and the strong foundations that we have in the strongest and the best managed economic bloc in Africa, the East African community. <laughs> talk of SADC, talk of COMESA, AFCTA, even when I was dealing with the European Union, they say that EAC is actually the benchmark of uh, economic block and even them, the EAC, they try to copy some few things from, I mean, the EU tries to copy some few things from, from the EAC. Now, <clears throat> going to the Quebec era, and you mentioned about the phenomenal growth of GDP. It may shock many people that when Mudaura and Quebec took over, our tax collection was, guess, 200. 180 billion shillings. Today, we are at 3 trillion going upward, and uh, we have every likelihood that um, in the next two years we might hit uh, 4 trillion. That, you know, it is so easy to forget history. But Ambassador, I want to tell you that your place in the history of this country, alongside Moi Kibaki, is cast in stone. Obviously, the darkest hour for Ambassador Mugawara was when he was named in the ICC. I remember from the year 2008, for a good five years, that time we were not in government. We were some young people who were volunteering, working around governments, supporting government, and the people who are in the mainstream of government were treating us so fairly that we never felt the need to actually join government. And know the things we did, people who worked with here, Francis Kimemia, Kiraito uh, Murungi, Monga and the rest, at a very dark time that we combined so many people, people in business, people in the private sector, to, to stabilize our country after you know the tragedy that we went through in 2007, 2008. But because of the support that the system uh, led by Ambassador Mudaura gave us, we were able to come from that dark place and, 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 and actually be the country you know, established and we were able to move on. Our GDP started moving again. And the ICC, who did work for five years, personally I did nothing for five years except work around Uhuru Kenyatta, Mudaura and the team alongside people like Professor Kagwanja, Steve Njiru, because it was actually a full-time job. At the same time, we had to get a new constitution. And again, I remember the many meetings that Mudaura convened at Harabi House. One meeting which I will never forget is uh, uh, at the end of it all, you know, Mudaura and, and Romano came here and given me the job of uh, uh, check meeting one, the owner, the owner. And uh, I remember we went to both sides. Uh, Mudaura was there, Kibaki was there uh, to receive now the reports uh, about, uh, before we went to the Bash. And I remember Kibaki asking uh, Raila now, Raila tell us, where are we? It was about whether to go for a parliamentary system or a presidential system. 
And uh, later look at Kibaka and see Your Excellency, the ODM party has decided to support the president system. President Kibaka could not believe his luck. He almost really signed up. And uh, the rest is history, and that's how we, we got the new position. But one thing I want to mention is uh, during the negotiation for the Grand Coalition, there was this incident when uh, I, um, there was one of the many dispute resolution uh, meetings uh, which I, I was privy to attend. And there was a Kibaki side, I was there, Mudaura was there, Kagwanja was there. And then uh, there was a regular side, Miguna, Karori, Omoni, and others. So one of the complaints that the regular side had was that we wrote a letter to Ambassador Modaura and Ambassador Modaura never responded. Kibaki looked at Modaura and asked him, why would you refuse to answer a letter? Where would the letter she have? And Modaura told Kibaki, you excellency, I got a letter, yes from a gentleman known as Karoli Omondi, who signed off as a chief of staff. And I consulted the, the book of the government's structure. I did not find that title somewhere. <laughs> so I decided to ignore it. <laughs> so that much ended there, and it never, it never recurred again. So um, I remember in the year 20, 11, 2012 there, and I wrote one opinion article in the Star about Modaura, and I said that we don't have to be judges or lawyers. I was trying to get that article today to know that, surely, Atakama Kulamutu Alikona Makosa, the things that Ambassador Modaura is being accused of, just comparing with his demeanor, even a primary school kid knows that Mudaura cannot live, Mudaura cannot commit murder, Mudaura cannot do force for eviction. I think maybe the others may want to give us a story, but you are not a Basil Mudaura, just not a new way. Later, Basil Mudaura called me to Harambe to thank me personally. And I had no position, I had no title. I was a no one. But he called me to say thank you, thank me for for that particular article. So I feel very happy, very proud to be associated. And I will tell you that your legacy lives on. Those of us who are serving government today, we will aspire and strive to do everything possible to ensure that we, we live by your legacy and we live a better public service and public institutions than we found them. Kiraito Murugi has said that uh, most of the people here uh, this, this looks like a meeting of uh, the former government. If that be the case, I want to associate myself with the former government. I say <laughs> that I look uh, in this room and I feel so proud to find so many men and women with whom we have come from so far, enjoyed the good times, suffered very uh, sad uh, and unfortunate times, I want to finish by asking that this is our country. We have no other country. We do not have a country for the, for the former government or for the current government. This country belongs to all of us. And I want to take this moment to ask that this book launch of uh, Ambassador Mudaura may it offer us an opportunity to reconcile, to make peace, to work together again for the better of this country. We all, know, we all know that Ambassador Modaura was not a divisive person, he was not a controversial person. And I think this book launch of his gives us an opportunity for those we have wronged, for those who have wronged us, to forgive each other. There are some people who have accused me of not speaking their cause. So let me offer them my professor apologies. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Francis Kimemi, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Mr. General, uh, Wanjoki Mushemi, I am profusely sorry to hear it to him. What about him about in the course of doing this? Sicily, I'm not going to apologize to him. <laughs>
I'm apologizing to those people who are older than me. Um, but uh, let us use this opportunity really to really open a new chapter of working together because there is a reason that God puts us in positions He has put us now in society. We are all here, people who are in this room, we are privileged people. Because if those people whom we worked with, went to school with, left in the villages, could ask, one day say, when I grow up, I want to be like Professor Jacob Kennedy. You are all privileged people. Whether you served in the past or whether you serve now, this is our country and we are privileged people. But let me also say that um, we do not come from the trees, we come from somewhere. And uh, I understand from what has been said here that Pasena Mudaura was also the patron of the Meru Economic and Social Branch. Um, uh, that for me gives me a lot of pride because we all come from somewhere and you cannot forget where we come from. Ambassador, I want to ask you to spare some time also and look with a, an eye of uh, sympathy to what is happening to the great county of Meru. All is not well. I have uh, counted that uh, since the advent of uh, devolution, uh, Mount Kenya region, and I, that includes Nairobi because half of the voters in Nairobi are from Mount Kenya region. Our county assemblies have impeached governors nine times. Two of them in Meru, two Wambora from Embu two times, Kiambu, Muranga, Kirinyaga, and I'm saying maybe it's about time in the spirit of inclusivity we let other regions also in Beijing <laughs> Why only us? Why only Mount Kenya region? Is it only us who have got leaves? Yeah? And you know these things that we do, they form the stereotypes that inform on other people. So I hope that the wise council will prevail. We are only one year since we went to elections. There is not even one audit report from the auditor general that is out. And more so, for me, impeaching a woman who has gone to election and won makes me very sad because I know that is difficult. So I know you are still the president of Meru. You are the checker number one. You can do something about it. Please help the great county of Meru to reconcile, put this, those leaders together, ask for our help if you need. You are our, our leader, you are our inspiration, you are our hope and we respect you. Thank you very much. Thank you.